hey guys welcome back to my youtube channel thank you so much those who have subscribed those who haven't subscribed please remember to subscribe more content is coming you're going to learn more so today we are going to talk about matters road safety so many accidents happen on a daily basis not because people want it to happen but because people are so careless the drivers driving vehicle on the road are so careless reckless mostly the psv matatu driver they are so reckless that they sometimes make accidents to happen that they could have been avoided so the rule in kenya while driving a vehicle is always drive on the left side you can only overtake on the right side you can only overtake on the left side when instructed by a police officer in uniform when there is an accident in front of you on the right side and the only place to overtake is the left side when the vehicle in front of you is standing right and the only space you have is to overtake on the left side simply because if you overtake on the right side you simply either knock the one turning on the right side while on the highway you can overtake on the left when the traffic is going in the same direction but please remember that while you're overtaking you cannot overtake at a junction you cannot overtake at a narrow road because that's dangerous you cannot overtake at a railway crossing you cannot overtake at a, an uphill and, a hill. and when the road is marked single or double continuous lines on the center of the road you cannot overtake those lines you cannot overtake on a bro of a hill you cannot overtake when approaching pedestrian crossing you cannot overtake approaching a hill a sharp bend a junction a railway crossing where you are required to stop as a driver on the road the first place is where there is a stop sign the stop signs ask you to stop the second place is where you are told by a police officer in uniform to stop then you are required to stop as a driver the third place is a pedestrian crossing you're supposed to stop in order for you to allow the pedestrian to cross the fourth place it's where by you are signaled by a, a, a warden to do that then you are required to stop at that particular area when you have caused an accident please always remember to stop or if it's too dangerous for you then you have to report to the nearest police station don't just hit and run you never know it could be your brother it could be your sister whom you've hit and you don't know so it's always good for you to stop parking your car make sure that you're not parking your car on a railway crossing you're not parking your car on a bridge you're not parking your car on a pedestrian crossing because if you park your car on a pedestrian crossing, people will not be able to use that pedestrian crossing. In the middle of the road and where there is no parking sign, you're also not allowed to park there. It's always polite for a driver driving a motor vehicle on the road to dim lights when approaching an oncoming vehicle. This is to enable the oncoming vehicle driver to see well the road. But most of the drivers on the road, they are so reckless in the sense that when an oncoming vehicle comes, instead of them dimming, instead of them dimming the lights, they proceed to put the light on full light. It's always polite for driver driving a motor vehicle to dim a light when there is an oncoming vehicle. This is simply to enable the oncoming vehicle driver to be able to see well and when driving on the road as a driver you should always give priority to ambulances the reason is well known to you and myself because the ambulance most cases they carry critically ill patients who need the doctor's attention to wherever they are going so just always as a good driver on the road always be patient and good enough to give the ambulance way so that they can speed off to whichever hospital that they are going also with the fire brigade they are also given priority on the road so that they go and put off fire so let's say maybe you're driving on any of the road and then you are stopped by a police officer could you be knowing the documents that you are required to produce before the police officer then here are the four documents that you are required to produce to the police officer the first document is the driving license. That driving license has to be valid. 
the second document is the insurance certificate which should be valid that that means that it should be active don't drive your car with an expired insurance certificate because in case of an accident the insurance company will not be liable so because of that you have to make sure that you are driving your vehicle with a valid driving license a valid insurance certificate a valid inspection certificate and a valid road license so those are the first documents that you are required to produce just in case a police officer stops you on the road ever of a motor vehicle while driving on the road has three eyes that's the two eyes and the mirrors so the mirrors play a significant role while driving on the road because when you're overtaking you have to use your mirror to make sure you're looking behind to ensure that there's no vehicle following you and then you are also supposed to use your mirror when you are reversing in order for you to avoid hitting objects or hitting other cars behind you as a driver driving on the road always make sure that you have a jack you have a spare wheel you have a wheel spanner a lifesaver and a torch these are tools that are required to be in the car while you're driving on the road just in case you have your tire bursts then you are able to replace your other spare wheel tire with the one that has burst so it's always important for you to be at night and then your lights maybe are not functioning well so the torch can help in such circumstances again the torch while you're fixing your spare wheel car the torch will help you while you're fixing that spare wheel because the lights of the vehicle may not help you at that time while you're walking in the streets of the cities we encounter these traffic lights so the sequence of the light is red red amber green amber then back to red so red means you stop when you see a traffic light showing red then it means you have to stop red means stop amber amber means wait you wait then green green means you can proceed so it's red amber green red amber green red amber green so when you see red means stop when you see amber be ready be prepared so to those drivers driving vehicles on the road please remember that greens allows you to go to proceed with the journey however if the roundabout is not clear then you have to wait for it to be clear in order for you to move because really common sense dictates that <laughs> you have to wait where will you drive the vehicle to unless you're going to hit another vehicle then you can go again if the pedestrians are still crossing it's polite for you to wait for them to cross so four places where you advise not to stop is on a junction a roundabout pedestrian crossing a brow of a hill and a railway crossing reasons that a rail a train may be coming and then it hits you around about you will cause a lot of traffic pedestrian crossing it's not allowed because the pedestrians have to cross while you are driving your vehicle on the road please just be a good driver for example if another vehicle is overtaking you don't accelerate at munapishana nazo please don't do that when another vehicle accelerate please give it chance for it to pass yes when another vehicle overtakes you allow it to pass don't start competing with it by accelerating that may lead to an accident you see so just allow it to pass your time will come when you need to overtake and then you'll overtake another vehicle or there's just the same vehicle let's say you're accelerating and then it's a two-way you see the oncoming vehicle may, you may easily cause an accident which could have been avoided in the first place so especially when it's at night allow the person the other vehicle the one that's overtaking you to pass dim your vehicle's light to enable the one overtaking you 
to go and also to avoid causing accident by the guys have you ever asked yourself the meaning of the yellow cab and white line in the middle of the road here's the answers to your questions so the yellow cab divides traffic that goes in the opposite direction while the white line divides traffic going in the same direction hope i answered your question the broken line in the middle of the road shows that the, it's safe for you to overtake it's safe for you to overtake so you can overtake on that broken line in the middle of the road but you should always be careful don't just overtake because the line says that the broken line says that you should always look make sure that it's clear the road is so clear even where you're overtaking for you to avoid collision double continuous line on the middle of the road says it's not safe for you to overtake just keep your side until when it will be clear or you reach to a broken line then it will be safe for you to overtake a continuous white line on a one-way traffic means that you cannot change lanes you should not do not change lanes it's not safe for you to do that at least when you're approaching a roundabout please don't enter with the wrong lane at the same time don't change lanes while you're on the roundabout because you are you can easily cause a, an accident also when you're living around about don't leave it on a wrong lane you can easily cause an accident please note that once an accident has happened you have to report to the police station within 24 hours the same applies to an insurance company this will save you time and will enable the insurance company to pay your claim if you if you don't do that most insurance company policies requires the insured to report an accident or an incident to them within 24 hours this to enable them plan themselves investigate even the accident and also verify the claims that are being reported to the insurance companies so just to be safe always do that within 24 hours for your own good to receive your driving license for the first time what are you required to do you're required to sign that driving license unless someone signs this on behalf of you but the thing that you're supposed to do is sign that driving license and please note that once you get the driving license you're not supposed to drive a vehicle on the road while you're drunk this will definitely result in an accident don't drive a vehicle a moving machine while you're sick this will definitely affect you don't drive a moving vehicle when you're under an influence of drug that's not advised and when a court of law asks you to stop maybe has banned you for a period of time not to drive on the vehicle please just oblige and don't drive on the road that will help you this will even reduce the most cases of accidents that are happening on our roads because most cases happens because of over speeding recklessness drunk driving when you are sick don't drive when you are under influence of drug or alcohol please when you're intoxicated don't drive again on our roads it's very dangerous when you're on the road please don't overtake recklessly don't drive recklessly don't over speed recklessly as a driver you have a duty of care towards other road users so your duty is to make sure that you're not causing accidents on the road which will impair other people or other road users or will may result to injury or even cause death so let's try to be our brother's keeper while on the road and to ensure that we are not overtaking we are not over speeding we are not using a roadworth vehicle we are not uh driving under influence of alcohol or we are intoxicated or we are driving under influence of drugs that impairs the judgment while you are driving on the road and definitely may result to an accident so during the day you can switch on your lights when it's so foggy it's so misty you cannot see 
in front of you or even behind you so it's always advisable for you to switch on your lights and then when it's raining heavily sometimes some rains are so heavy that cannot even allow you to see so during that you also advise to switch on your lights in order for you to see where you're going or where you are coming from please know that in a two-way traffic vehicle are moving the opposite directions this <laughs> Vehicle, yes, in a two-way traffic, vehicle are moving in the opposite direction. In a two-way traffic, in a one-way traffic, then vehicle are moving in the same direction. So white continuous line on a one-way traffic, the driver is not allowed to change lanes. And white broken lines on a one-way traffic says that the driver can change lanes to a suitable lane that he feels like. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Please remember to subscribe. And to like, share. Bye.